Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Off the Press, a program where we take a look at all the latest headlines in our newspaper review to make sure you get the headlines and a bit of the details with the help of an analyst. Apologies for coming just a little bit uh, behind schedule. My name is Felicity Ezewike and I am with a news producer here at Plus TV Africa, Sunday. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Felicity. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll start with a punch newspaper this morning. Uh, we'll start with the big one, the streaming funding crisis cripples 12 key federal roads contractors abandon projects that's it on your screen you have a rider federal government budgets 84.54 billion naira for major roads in three years some other headlines on the front page economy recorded 4.17 billion dollars for its deficit in one year that's coming from a mayfile his picture is right there and just beside it on page 28 you'll find details to the story fg targets 939 billion hour from oil block licenses renewal we still have something on oil on the front page this morning a report that is saying refineries processed no crude oil in three months. That's alarming, really. Uh, who is that information coming from? The man who should know, Kerry, I think. Or it could be just a picture that you need to read the story in full to get all the details. And then at the very top, mass, taxpayers get 30 days to obtain tax certificates. Mm. Okay, let's look at that beautiful picture on the front page now. There you have it. Um, one of the dance troops at a 2019 carnival Calabar in Cross River State on Saturday. We're a very colorful nation indeed. All right, just minuted. Um, we have four arrested over suspected ocean cold killings. My daughter was buried on church premises. Last student's father speaks up. That's a picture of the girl there. Uh, police arrest a kitty police student for alleged gang rape. That's sad when France currency war against West Africa is also captured on the back page uh, of the paper on something uh, by Obadia Malafia. That's uh, it on the back page and front page of the Punch newspaper. But let's bring Sunday in this morning uh, to share his thought on this. Federal roads, 12 key federal roads contractors abandon. What are your thoughts about it? Well, um, it's not shocking to me because uh, Nigeria is a country where anybody can come in and claim to be a contractor, do whatever he or she likes, and then nobody monitors. You know, it's unfortunate that our federal roads are in the state at which they are now. We remember very well the Minister of um, uh, uh, Minister of um, works. Trans uh, rock, works, Housing and Works. Uh, uh, Honorable Baba Chide yeah. Fashola, Baba Tunde Fashola, came out to tell Nigerians that uh, Nigerian roads are motorable, are good. <laughs> I mean, if you drive through, for instance, the Lagos Ibadan Express Road, if you drive through that road, in as much as there are works that are going on, since 1999, construction has never ceased on that road. So, Singling out these 12 major roads is so alarming. If you pass through them, you know that they are dead trap. And the reason why governments have, over the years, paid deaf ear to them is that most of them don't use this road. So that is why a minister can probably come out and tell you that our roads are good. You know, because yeah. they don't use it. They fly either they are flying on there or they are using... But does it worry you that every year monies are budgeted and this year alone we're hearing the writer to that story is the federal government budgets 84.54 billion hour for major roads yeah, in that, three that years that's what between, yeah uh, for three years for three years now yeah. now where are the evidence to show that this money was actually implemented in this road go to this like the, the, there is one in, um along ikurudu shagam road the contractors, like the report said, they, are, they have taken their tractors and everything. They are off the road. They are nowhere to be is, found. Is so they have abandoned. Who should be monitoring this project? It's the work of the, of the minister and his parastators. They, they are the people in charge. And then federal, we have Federal Road Maintenance Agency, FEMA, who once in a while comes in to you know, patch, 
you know, just to make the road motorable. FEMA, whether they, exist, they still exist today, only God knows, you know. So, I mean, government, our president have said that he is the government that fights corruption. I believe he will come in and look after, and look through these contractors, look at their books, open it, and find out what is actually wrong. Because these are major roads. Nigerians are dying every blessed day. And our government keep, keep saying that the roads are motorable. So they should once in a while apply some of this road so that they actually know what Nigerians are passing through. It's uh, unfortunate. Which, 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 uh, really unfortunate. Which other headlines would you want to touch in this morning? Well, the National Assembly Rehabilitation uh, that uh, Serap is asking, seeking for court to stop um, the Minister of Budget and the federal government from not releasing this money. Yeah, ju just in case, it's captioned, uh, it's on your screen now, uh, on the corner of the masthead. It's written, Serap others ask courts to stop 37 billionaire National Assembly renovation. Uh, details of that story is on page 13. That's what Asande is talking about. Yeah, I mean, take a look at Nigeria, one of the poorest nations in the world, where its citizens live below a, a, a dollar and you want to spend such amount in innovating a building, not that you are constructing a new one. It's uncalled for. Very, very uncalled for. It's uncalled for. This money can be used to, to, to better the lives of the ordinary Nigerians who are on the way, on the road, and you want to re do just renovation. What are you renovating? Is it a new building? It's not a new building. I mean, Serap and other civil society group, they are on point on this. And, the judiciary should, you know, although, like they say, this government over the over a couple of months have not been obeying court order. Even if courts come out to say, oh, federal government, stop. I mean, we know the kind of country, the kind of government that we are in. They, they may probably disburse the same money and Well, they, some they government spend officials it. will tell you now that the government respects the rule of law, but at their time, at they, their they, own they will time, tell not you at that. a court-appointed time, oh. as we saw in the case of Shore and Dasuki. Well, the minister will come up and tell you that oh, it was they were released on based on passionate ground. That and does have no place says, in law. Does it, it has no bearing in law. There is no bearing in law to say you release somebody on a passionate ground who court have ordered that they should be released. Several, not one, not two court. And you are saying it's, you are releasing the person based on compassionate ground. I mean, this is almost like a lawless country, but I probably will not get to that extent. The Guardian newspaper is next for review this morning. And um, what they're saying here, fun lovers are at the beach. Elegushi in Leki, Lagos. That's the picture on the front page. It's a season of celebration. It's the holiday. In spite of our continued problems, we still have to find time to relax and be happy. Plus, TV Africa had its um, um, end of the year party as well uh, just yesterday. Um, just beside it, uh, away from the fun making, of course, we have this headline Buhari silent on Defense Minister as Defense Minister is named in. $550,000 fund diversion. Uh, it never ends, does it? The big one this morning is why Nigerians may be poorer in 2020 by manufacturers predict high cost of doing business, lower per capita income. Rights group activist Subuhari others over 37 billion naira National Assembly complex renovation budget. Sustain your rootlessness against terrorists, Boratai tells soldiers. Uh, one wonders why he would be saying sustain rootlessness. Sustain rootlessness against terrorists when they say there is no territory. Let's start with that before we go to other um, headlines. Okay. He is saying that sustain um, your rootlessness against terrorists when he says no territory in Nigeria is under the captivity of Boko Haram. Doesn't that conflict the position that they present all the time? I mean, um, like you said, it's, it's really a conflict because over the years, we have heard that uh, Boko Haram has been defeated. Sometimes they tell you technically. The other time, they give you another name. Well, Burata, he visited the troops at the war front. He was encouraging, encouraging, encouraging them during the Christmas um, 
visitation. So when it means uh, that they should tackle terrorism, it just to ginger the troops, to tell them that the Nigerian people are behind them, to tell them that um, no matter what the struggle is, they should keep the fight going, you know. But the issue now is, um, are these military personnel, are they well equipped? What is the level of equipment, fighting equipment do they have as compared to what the insurgency are having? So for him to say that um, some no community is under Boko Haram siege, I think I beg to be differ in that because there are some communities in Bronu that we all know that Boko Haram is fully on ground and they are operating. You know, they may, they may not be rampant the way they used to be, but trust me, I think that statement needs to be questioned. All right, uh, there's this one that's just after, like the third, the fourth uh, box on the front page. Let me just give you a glimpse of it. Uh, the fourth box on the front page of the paper, um, you will see the story about late, I ate her hard with my mother to get rich. Boyfriend of murdered last student confesses. That's it on the front page of the paper for you this morning. Um, if you go a little up, you will... There, okay, just beside it, you see uh, Buhari's silence um, as Defence Minister is named in that um, amount of diversion. I mentioned that earlier. AIB releases preliminary report on Medview plane crash. Um, and then the story about Buratai telling soldiers to sustain their ruthlessness against um, uh, terrorists is also captured. Let's just slide up a little and see what the big one is. Um, I mentioned earlier already to you that why Nigerians may be poorer in 2020. Uh, that's something I'll be picking uh, Sunday Binibo's uh, thought on in a bit. Predict high cost of doing business, lower per capita income. Uh, that's another one for you on the front page. Um, if we go to the back of it, uh, you will be seeing uh, a story on uh, sports, basically. That's what you will see on the back page. Abbey Warriors down, Platy United 3 0. Aqua Edge Lobby as Dakada Hold Sunshine Stars. Uh, that's um, some sports stories. Uh, we also have something on uh, Chelsea there. And uh, Sanusi predicts great turnaround uh, for Nigerian football in 2020. We'll get to Sunday about that much later. That's if we have time. But for now, let's talk about this big one that's just looking at you and I this morning. Mm -hmm. Why Nigerians may be poorer in 2020. Do we have room to be poorer? Of course, there's every tendency because this one is coming. We're already from, very poor. We, Nigeria is one of, the, is, I think, is among the five poorest nations. In, 20, in 2018, we overtook India as the poorest nation in the, uh, in the world. But trust me, if this is coming from Manufacturers Association of the Nigeria, it then means there's a problem. Because this is not an international report now that will say, oh, they are not Nigerians, so they can't just sit there and say Nigerians are poor. This is coming from our own and a well-recognized organization in Nigeria. I am not surprised because when the U.S. said that in Nigerians live below $1,000, a dollar, it's, it's not a joke. So but the government keeps keep saying, th their rhetoric is quite different from that, that they have lifted a lot more people out of poverty that, in the time that they've been in government than um, seen in previous administration. Yet, we keep having this. Who do we believe? Are we supposed to believe the people who've elected to be in position to help us elevate our sufferings? Or we're to believe those who are part of the population and who struggle to make a living by manufacturing? You believe what the people see. Not every government, no matter the political party they are from, will always use propaganda to tell you what they are doing. They will not tell you what they are not doing. Government will tell you Nigerians are satisfied. They will tell you we have employed over 2,000 graduates. We have empowered over 3,000 women. What are you empowering? How many people is being empowered? Out of over uh, 2 point something million Nigerians. Nigerians are going to get poorer. It's not a prophecy, but it's something that, that is looming. But, so it's not left for the government to still put necessary things in place in order to prevent, I mean, empower the youth, empower well, the women, and then bring people out of poverty, not budgeting a huge sums of money to renovate a building while Nigerians are dying of hunger.
All right, let's uh, take a quick look at Daily Sun. Uh, we're almost out of time. Uh, unemployment is on the front page. APC stretching limits to off Nigerians. That's uh, the opposition speaking now. You find details on page three of the paper. Uh, we also have um, the, the issue of the NAS renovation is the big one for the Sun newspaper this morning. I'll just uh, show you a bit of, okay, that's it for you on the screen. And then uh, Sarah budget others go to court. And then crushed terrorist Burata Chadis troops. Uh, we also brought that story uh, to you. Uh, um, if I take other stories at the bottom, let's go to the one that's looking at you just beside the masthead where a Southeast group knocks IGP, PSC, over lopsided police promotions posting. Mm, that looks uh, to be an interesting read. You might want to go catch the details of it. And then at the bottom, uh, we have Stop Lamenting, Take Opportunities, or Congo tells Ndimo, UN Silence, Fierling, Iswap, Boko Haram says Right Group. And then Edo, ex Edo speaker, threatens to open can of wounds on Oshimale. I guess we've not heard the last of the troubles uh, in, uh, in the political scene in Edo State uh, between the national chairman and the state governor. Uh, on the back page is a public forum, and the uh, issue this morning is labor and employment in first year of the next level. Probably an analysis you might want to uh, take a look on. Um, let's look at this can of worms quickly, as, as quickly as you can. Before we well, um, Stop. An ex Edo speaker threatens to open can of worms on I, Oshomole. I, I mean, he, he, he's, he, he's a speaker when Oshomole was the governor, so he might have some some cockroaches that he wants to unveil that Oshomole has kept for a very long time. Not forgetting that um, the present governor is at a log ahead with the national chairman. Even the Edo APC came out to say they have suspended the national chairman. So that is to tell you that Edo is booming with crisis. My fear is ahead of the, the election, 2020 election, Edo governorship election. Only God knows what might happen in, in, in Edo State. And yesterday, on Saturday, we learned that the deputy governor's family's house was um, attacked by hoodlums, which he came out to deny that there was no such. But whether there is such or not, the, the issue is this is a battle that is already starting ahead of the election. So the APC crisis in Edo is really, really intense. And then, yeah, we're, we're, we're out of town, okay. so we'll just take a quick look at uh, the headlines on the Vanguard newspaper. Killing of 11 Christians. Blame Buhari Sultan for Iswab, Boko Haram's audacity. Uh, that's on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper. A couple of uh, writers to that story. That's uh, National Christian uh, Elders Forum speaking, though. Uh, details is on page five of the paper. The Calabar uh, Carnival 2019 is captured. Pretty ladies on the front page. Elza Zaki's fate. You are economical with truth. Shiites reply, Malami. And then we have only verified constituency projects will attract payment. The federal government speaking tough there. A Papa gridlock. Dangote loses 25 billion naira. That's a lot of money. And of course, uh, the, uh, the assembly is responding. Uh, reps justify plans to spend 37 billion on a NAS complex renovation, NGOs go to court. And then at the very top, we have this issue of a man killing his girlfriend uh, captured. I don't know if you followed that story, if you can yeah. speak on it quickly as we wrap up the review this morning. Well, like the, uh, was it the point? How I ate um, my girlfriend's heart with my mom. I mean, it tells you the level of poverty in the country, how the, some Nigerians we'll want to get far. money or because of, you know, want to be big in the society. So it's really, really appalling that such thing is coming from a youth at that. And uh, you have nobody to kid them to kid. It's even wrong to even do that. You know, it's very, very annoying. I guess I'm happy that the arms of the law has finally caught up with them. Well, let's it's see and hope justice. that they really face uh, the full rate, rate um, of the, law. Of the yeah. law. Um We have complete sports, but we don't have time to go through it right now. Uh, you might want to go to your vendor and get a copy. Uh, take a look at what Liverpool is up to. Sime uh, is on the front page and Didi saw us uh, back to the top. Those are some of the stories that you will catch on the complete sports uh, Sunday. Thank you very much for coming on the program this it's a morning. It's pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching. We'll be back tomorrow, fresh and early, with all the latest headlines for your entertainment and information. My name is Felicity. It's a weekend. Be well.